Hey everybody, it's Marsh Monk here. This is going to be my Legends of Tomorrow Season uh, 1. I almost said 2. Season 1, Episode 7 review? 6 review? I have no idea. This episode, was, this episode was really good because of what they did with Oliver in the future. We're going to talk about that. But may I just say, I think that this week is gonna ha we're, we're having some long videos. I'm not in my usual spot. Um, we're kind of trying to clean the room up a little bit, so you know I'm not in my regular spot. And I kind of like this spot because it has like a really nice background, you know. But um, so just bear with me here this week. I've been doing a lot of videos, catching up with a lot of stuff. I am going to be dropping Agent Carter if they do a season three. I'm not going to be reviewing it because it's just so many things. And same, probably the same with Star Wars Rebels. If they do a season three, probably not going to review it. I will do bonus videos, but not reviewing it weekly. It's just so much stuff. So anyway, let's get started. But this episode started off, of course, we landed off with uh, Connor Hawk. We see him again, and they kind of explain him a little bit in this uh, episode, their version of Connor Hawk. They kind of explain him, but they need to repair the ship. So Sarah and Rip go off, and, and so do uh, Mick and um, Leonard, I almost forgot his name, had him go in the heat wave. They go off with him too, and there's just like, it's kind of like this Easter egg with No Man's Land, with Star City, with, with what's going on with 2046. No Man's Land in the comics was kind of like this Batman storyline with like Gotham City blocked up from like the rest of the, the world. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. So they kind of did that with this. And, you know, I don't know if they were exactly blocked off, but it seemed like they were because of Deathstroke, which we'll talk about. So let's talk about that. So meet the new Deathstroke, Grant Wilson. Now, obviously, this is Slade Wilson's son. He had another son in the comics, Jericho, which was with the, the whole Teen Titans thing. We actually saw him in the Teen Titans animated show if you watch that. But, oh my eyes, oh my eyes. Uh, allergies, but anyway, yeah, it was really fun to see that they did Grant Wilson in this episode. He was a really fun character. They kind of would have backtracked a little more. I, wa I wanted to hear a little bit more of his story in terms of like, because this is years later in Star City, so I wanted to hear more of this because we got some side stories too, which we'll talk about. But it was really interesting seeing him kind of rule Star City and how he beat the original Green Arrow, so that was really cool too. Um, obviously the shows aren't allowed to do Deathstroke Slade Wilson anymore because apparently he's reserved for another project which makes me think of Suicide Squad or a Teen Titans movie or like a Teen Titans show and they want Deathstroke or something Teen Titans something, you know, Batman something Green Arrow, well not Green Arrow, but something Batman or Teen Titans related so that's what I think or Suicide Squad related so, you know, he's, they're not allowed to use him so it was really cool that they got to do Grant Wilson um, which I think the movies would never get to unless they did like a future thing time travel. But anyway, it was really interesting to see that they did Great Wilson in this episode. But let's go on to Connor Hawk stuff. So Connor Hawk was explained because he is the son of Diggle himself. And I kind of explained that, you know, Oliver kind of explained that everybody's gone. Whether or not they died, we know Felicity fled the city, so she's probably not dead by now. But, you know, John's probably dead. Where is Sarah? That's interesting. Sarah as in Diggle's daughter, which is Connor's older sister. So where is she at? That's really interesting too. Possibly died as well, you know, with Diggle and Lila, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, Laurel's dead, Quentin's dead, so there's just all of these crazy things that are going on. Thea's probably dead, too, so it's all of these crazy things that are being explained. But I'm really glad that they ended up making Connor Hawk John, like, Diggle's uh, son. I thought that was really interesting, like, a turntable, because Oliver's son is Connor Hawk in the comics, so they kind of twisted it with uh, Diggle in this, which I really like. I really like how they went with that. Wouldn't it be interesting if Diggle, if, or if Connor Hawk was not, if Lila wasn't his mother, like, if they explained that it was... Diggle's new wife, and then they can explain the new character. That would have been really cool, too. But it was really interesting to see Connor Hawkins' episode. He was really cool. But moving on to the side stories before we get on to more Green Arrow stuff. Um, moving on to the side stories, um, we have Captain Cold and Heat Wave. Now, Heat Wave's kind of like, oh my gosh, I love this place. It's like Universal Orlando for me, like a fun time. And so he kind of gets into this uh, 2046 in Star City. He's like, I don't want to leave. This is bad guy central for me. I can really rule here. And Captain Cold's kind of turning to the hero side a little bit. I feel like, like, I feel like this in particular mission, like maybe before, because obviously they were Rip Hunter recruited them as they were doing a heist. So I feel like if he would, if he never joined the Legends, he would have still been a bad guy, you know, still like bad at heart, cold heart. But I feel like he's now turning to the good side. He's turning to a hero, and that Barry was right after, after all, all about Snart. I feel like he's gonna become this like big hero character. Maybe not too big of a hero character, but like kind of, you know. It's really interesting to see him against Heatwave in this episode. He even locks Heatwave into that invisible force field room, uh, which is really interesting too. So I feel like it was Captain Cold versus Heatwave. Not in particularly interested in this story. I kind of felt like the Oliver Connor Hawk stuff overshadowed it a little bit. I didn't like where it was going, 
Usually I like Huey of Captain Cold, but in this episode it was kind of just turned off for me. Don't know why, but it just was. Same thing goes for a little bit of what was going on with Jax. We find out that Jax has a crush on Kendra, which that was really interesting. Even though Kendra's probably like a little bit older than him. Yeah. But we kind of found out that they were like competing, like the like Ray was competing with Jax. Not like actual competing, but like a little bit. And, had, we, and we also explored the psychic connection between Stein and Jax, which is really interesting too. They kind of brought that up a little bit. But it was really interesting to see them kind of go back and forth too. Not too much of a big storyline, and Kendra's like shut that down. And I'm glad. I don't think, like, this show is really good, but adding relationship stuff, like, kind of like how Arrow did with, like, Laurel and now with Felicity, it works for them. But on Legends, there's so many people, so many characters, so many things going on that I don't think relationships would work. Like, I, like if Kendra would be with Ray, I don't think that would work. I think it would just kind of turn flat, which is good, because they got rid of Hawkman and Cisco's not there, so now Kendra can be, like, kind of her own character, which is good, because Hawkgirl makes more sense than Hawkman. Like, let's be real here. Hawkman's... The Hawk Girl is better a character than the Hawk. Um, Hawk Girl is a better character than Hawkman, and I feel like adding a relationship to it would just like make it flat and just like not interesting for her character because we don't want her to have a relationship. We want to explore Hawk Girl, not Kendra's relationship with whoever. You know what I mean? So I feel like that was really cool too. But overall, we turn back to the all, um, you know the Green Arrow stuff with them with Oliver kind of with the one arm Oliver now obviously that's Batman Dirt and Return stuff with Frank Miller where he had the one arm which that was really interesting but he gets the robotic arm he comes back fights Grant Wilson and everything kind of kind of gets back to a new like Oliver's kind of going to be like the Bruce Wayne of Batman Beyond which I thought was really cool actually kind of like a Batman Beyond reference too like to me a little bit so that, that was really interesting too I think there was another easter egg too there was the the warehouse was actually the street name that Oliver gave them for the warehouse was actually a comic book illustrator or writer, I can't remember, but it was the name of someone who worked with the comics. I thought that was really cool too. Just throwing that out there. But anyway, yeah, they're not turning into this like the Batman Beyond situation where they beat Deathstroke, obviously, which is really cool. And then they kind of just fix up the, the old arrow cave, which is the new arrow cave for the old arrow cave. But anyway, they started fixing it up, so I thought that was really cool. But exploring the future, exploring Star City was really cool. What did you guys think of the episode? Did you think that the other storylines were kind of flat compared to the Green Arrow one? And do you want to see the Flash future? Like, do you want to see, like, future of, of Central City 2 with all the Flash characters? Maybe Tornado Twins? Maybe Iris with, like, pregnancy or something? Like, comment down below. What do you guys think about that, too? Links in there to my other Legends videos. Links in there to my Twitter, Instagram, Vine, Vlog channel, and Zim channel. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to this video. Uh, like for this video. And wait, what? <laughs> like for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.